Terracotta House. Uh, that's Belinda. Um, she saw our tower house. She, she lived in Fitzroy. She saw our tower house. She's lived here for ages. She's like, I've got this amount of money. I've got zero earning capacity. There's no more money. Um, I live in Fitzroy. I love it, but, it's, but I also love, I, I just need a veggie garden. I need to work in the soil until I die. Um, so she said, come shopping with me. She didn't have a site. So uh, I'd never met her before. She just rang and I was like, cool. It sounds like fun. So we went looking around for different sites. She wanted Fitzroy. We ended up in Northcote and she found this great cottage, which she was really worried about because the house is at the northern end. She was worried about overshadowing, but it's only single story. And I said, don't worry about it. We'll clean up the back. We'll have a big green space in the middle and we'll add another pavilion on the southern boundary so it faces north. Um, this is also a multi-gen house, which traditionally is kids helping elderly parents, but in the current fucked economy, um, well, so previous we've explored in Charles House, so the granny flat out the back, but in the current economy it's more about parent, elderly parents supporting adult children, and um, uh, so Owen, the son, is uh, a chef, so obviously he's suffered through COVID as well. So we ended up with two, um, two pavilions on the site where Belinda would live in the back one, Owen would live in the front one. He now has a wife, they'll probably have kids, um, all living on one site. Um, the original house was the traditional four bedrooms, um, so dark spaces, long corridor, um, traversing down to awkward shared space and then this strange connection with the backyard. Um, we turned that on its head. Uh, really, Union Street, it's a really beautiful connected community there. Um, so we put the, the kitchen, uh, uh, dining and the, and the living all facing north, great little veranda. Um, so you can just uh, be waving to your neighbours as they go past. Um, and so there's, and Belinda also, again, tight budget, Belinda also likes everything on display, so very different for us because we like hiding stuff. Uh, mirrored splash back and then she sits next to, well, you know, this is Owen's house, but they were constantly in each other's house with this connection, this view to the street where, you know, there, there's that mirrored splash back. So you get this sort of this illusion of more garden um, and the original front garden and you get these great moments of community just gathering around the fence. And then there's her pavilion, which is exactly the same rules, facing north, central garden, getting loads of sunlight. Uh, but also the cool thing about this site is there's this little gap going down the side of the house. So this, we put polluted glass all in there so she can come off Union Street and not get in the way of Owen and his wife. But also, um, like yourselves, trying to activate laneways. Hopefully this will take off and become you know, an activated laneway instead of a wasted uh, public space. And so that's really her front door there. She can go out here and go straight to West Gus um, Cinema, catch a film. There's also this, God, I hope nobody designed this in this room, there's this um, uh, unsympathetic box that's been added on the neighbour's side. So there's this third space, which is the family hall. That's where the only laundry is. And there's a Murphy bed in here and it's one line of books. So she uses it as a study. During COVID, she wrote a book there. But they also um, have Christmas and family events and dinner quite often ends up in the family hall rather than in each other's homes. Central original gate, central original footpath uh, path coming down and door, that set up all of the geometry or the, laid out the plan. So all of these spaces obey that uh, rather than designing something internally outwards, uh, which just worked for us in terms of separating living from the kitchen dining. And then it's all about the garden for her. So the, you know, she was just like, utility, utility. Like the rest of the house, calm down, I don't have any money. Um, but this is what, where I want to be, which was great for us. It's like, okay, we need to recalibrate. Um, and in briefing with her as well, you know, sitting in Fitzroy with her little clay, her little terracotta pots and just pointing to them, going, that's what I want to do, and I've got this shitty little light well. Um, so we just took that quite literally, as I often do, and decided to clad this thing in, in terracotta, um, which is also a bit of a nod to um, sort of the vernacular in the area, the old um, uh, terracotta roofs. And so we ended up with these two almost identical pots, but one sitting on top of this recycled brick plinth. <coughs> I'm also, I, I wanted to be a comic book artist, but my mother told me maybe do something that'll you, make you, well, that you could get a career out of. So I went to architecture. And so I love drawing and line weights and all of that kind of stuff. And this is an idea for detailing here. We didn't have the money to do our usual really tight detail, chamfering corners, so it looks like one homogenous thing. So it's all, Colour bond flashing and screws and rivets 
coming out the wazoo, and we went with it instead of resisting it. Um, so we ended up with all these materials with these really thick texture lines around it. I just geeked out about this. Um, so, you know, affordable detailing. Um, we've got one hood on the eastern block. Uh, so that's her master bedroom upstairs. And so she wants to rise with the sunrise, wake with the sunrise. So natural light comes in and washes down that wall and her bed's right there and she friggin' loves it. Um, I would not live that way. Uh, and then there's the lounge room with the, the east facing uh, dormer and that gets this incredible light bouncing off the, the terracotta back into that space in the afternoon. <clears throat> and then the, the dormer over the top of the, the family hall um, has a, a north facing dormer, so cutting out all summer sun and then washing it with loads of winter sun. Um, and then also reading that, she wanted very, you know, different generations, she wanted very simple interiors, but to be able to read these forms, we've run the terracotta in on the lower box um, and then run the, run the brick in on, so you get, really understand these two different forms. But we've also brought the paving through this in between connector space and lined it in timber above, which is the same timber that we've used where we've cut, you know, excavated this chunk out of the side of the original cottage as well. So it's really clear where we've um, inserted or, or taken something away. And the Willie Weston um, wallpapers, incredible Indigenous artists, um, uh, you know, this hand-drawn wallpaper, it just gives this great texture to it where she really didn't want any texture. She just wanted plaster. Um, so that was a lovely way of bringing some life into it. And finally, uh, you know, working with Derek, well, getting Derek um, Swalwell to take photographs, it's great. You just say a couple of t sentences and he's just off and does it. And so when we got the package of photographs back, he's just like most of them are of the garden. <laughs> so he just geeked out on it. And she was very specific about how, like these are just very simple planter boxes. She's a really utilitarian kind of person, which is refreshing. It's like, just, I just want somewhere to sleep and shower. Everything else just calm down. That's Terracotta House. <laughs>